So listen, I was playing The Sims, not really expecting much to happen. Really, I was just kind of killing time to get content for the cat episode. When someone decided to move the story along themselves. Cheese was minding his own business when he got a random phone call from Olivia? At first, I thought this was weird. There have been a few incidences in the past that made me a bit suspicious on the intent of this phone call, but nonetheless, I picked up. I mean, if it was drama, that would be pretty fun to see. But this was different. Olivia wasn't asking to hang out with Cheese. She just had a very important question. Olivia, no, you can't. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> what? What do you mean you found a ring in Mac's bag? Olivia asked Cheese what she should do, and Cheese, being Mac's wingman, obviously told her to go for it. Um, yeah, say yes. Now in my mind? This just meant that she would for sure say yes when I decided to have Mac actually ask her to marry him. But no. This meant Mac and Olivia automatically got engaged. You're right, of course I should say yes. What was I thinking? Oh, gee, I can't believe this is happening. Oh, what? Wait! Whoa! Wait! Whoa! Wait! 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 Engaged? Uh, to be wed? I really was not prepared for such a major life event to just come out of nowhere. So much so that Mac was still a teenager when he got engaged. Clearly Mac was very eager to get things going with his life, so I listened to him and quickly baked a cake to age up the twins into young adults. Now, being a young adult and all, it was time for the twins to go out into the real world and get some jobs. Mac, of course, picked a writing career, while Cheese became an artist. With these new jobs under their belt, a fiancé in Mac's corner and a hopefully soon-to-be fiancé in Cheese's, I decided it was only right for them to move out. It was pretty emotional. Mac and Cheese hugged their moms goodbye, got a small loan from them, and headed out into the world. And this is when I figured out that 2,000 simoleons wasn't going to be enough for them to survive. Oh god. I don't think we're going to have enough money to move anywhere, actually. I bought the twins an empty lot and had about 500 simoleons left over. I thought, hey, they'll just spend some time on their mom's lot, save up some money, and then we'll build them a house. And it'll be fine. But the twins couldn't get in the house for some reason, and they would have to be homeless for days if they were going to save enough money to build or buy their own house. So they moved back in with Natalie and Dina. They spent just an extra day or two getting a few more simoleons together. Selling paintings, selling stitches, just going to work. And eventually they made enough where they could comfortably take a measly 16,000 simoleons from their moms and move out a second time. They bought a nice one-bed, one-bath house, which I spent forever converting into two bedrooms, even though a two-bedroom house was right next door and I just overlooked it. Anyway, they had everything they needed. A nice bathroom, beds, a kitchen, and absolutely nothing else. The house was so bare. It was really sad. No TV, no rugs, no wall decor. I mean, it was just awful. Wow, do you guys like it? It's really empty. There's actually nothing going on yet. You can fish in the backyard. The welcome party came while Cheese was away, and Mac decided to entertain the guests by taking them fishing. Just so he could hopefully catch some fish and sell them for more simoleons. The new house clearly wasn't going to work. I had a big plan of keeping Mac and Cheese together even when they got married, and just having them live in a huge house full of siblings and cousins. The works, you know? There wasn't even room for Olivia to move in, let alone Evie. And kids? Forget about it. But what was I gonna do? Mac and Cheese were already doing everything they could for cash. Going to work full-time, selling knickknacks, selling artwork, 
buying cheap furniture. I just had to let the game play out and pray that they saved up the simoleons quickly. That was until I devised a plan. Now listen, I know I may have been a villain in the past, causing some of Natalie and Dina's problems, definitely causing Mac and G's problems, whatever. But this time, I was the villain. And I knew it. But what could I do? I needed to make a lot of money, and I needed to make it fast. I needed to move Mac and Cheese into a bigger house now. I'm antsy! So I thought, Mac and Olivia are engaged, maybe we can rip a page right out of Natalie's book and steal Olivia's money when she moves in with Mac. But she couldn't move in yet. The house wasn't even fit for two sims to move in, let alone three, like I already said. So I added a few layers to the idea. What if Mac and Olivia eloped? She would become a part of the household and instead of just revamping the house, we would take her money and immediately move into a new house. It was the perfect plan, although it relied on Olivia being rich enough to get us enough money to buy a big house. If she didn't have the money, then we just took on an extra sim with no backup plan. How much money do you think Olivia has? Because what if- hear me out. Oh, what if I elope? Mac and Olivia elope. We go to a park, we invite Cheese and my parents, and we elope, and we have Olivia move in with us and we steal all her money. How much money do you think she has? So we took the risk. Mac and Olivia gathered some family around and eloped under the gazebo where Dina proposed to Natalie. And as the confetti fell and the menu popped up to join households, we finally got the big break we needed. Olivia was loaded. I mean, far richer than Dina's family with way more to take. God bless Olivia. And we took. Olivia was my saving grace. We took her money, leaving her family with enough to get by, and went on to look for a new house. Only this is when I realized I had made a mistake. You see, the houses in The Sims are so expensive, and the jump from starter home to not starter home is crazy. And the money we took from Olivia's family still wasn't enough. But while shopping for a new house, I discovered Olivia's family home. It was huge, arguably the biggest house in the neighborhood. If only I had moved mac and cheese into Olivia's family, I could have been in their house and had their fortune. Oh wait. I can still do that. I went back to Mac and Cheese's starter home, I bulldozed the lot, made a few thousand simoleons, and moved the household. All we had to do was move into Olivia's house with her family. If we evicted her family, we wouldn't get the rest of their money and we wouldn't have the funds to buy their house from them. So we had to move in with them. In my mind, we were gonna just take their simoleons, move into their house, and Lock all of them in the basement until their needs slowly ticked down and they all died. It would be easy! Okay, okay, when we actually moved in, I decided to be a bit more, um, morally right. And simply took Olivia's dad and moved him and the other family members out of the house into a different house. I'm not that crazy. Perfect. Yeah. You guys can move in there, and then I, I'm gonna go. Oh my god, it's lovely! It's so nice in here! You guys are gonna love it. You guys are really gonna enjoy the space. Have fun! I did then erase the wild past of Olivia's family from the world map and Renamed the lot after the Kraft family, of course. D oh, here's the breakdown. Wait, 
Okay, here's the breakdown. Dennis Kim and Lydia Spencer had a daughter named Alice Spencer Kim, then divorced. Alice married Eric Lewis and had her own little girl, Olivia Kim Lewis. They live with Alice's dad, Dennis, remember? And Eric's mom, Vivian Lewis. Your family's even more messed up than my family. Craft. Mac and cheese took over now. And so we did it. Olivia, beautiful, amazing Olivia had saved us. We had a large sum of simoleons and an even larger house. All that's left to do is revamp the house into something a little bit nicer. That'll probably end up on the VODs channel, so you'll have to check it out there. Don't worry, I'm still going to keep up with Natalie and Dina too. And I may have fed Mayor Whiskers and Kipper some aged down treats, so they'll be around for a bit longer and I'll keep in touch with them too. But now we have some new faces, big developments, and hopefully a wedding between Cheese and Evie in the future. So I guess you'll just have to stick around to see how that plays out. Anyways, if you saw this, thanks. And if you didn't, that's okay too. Goodbye everyone!